sports fan, it's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, and today we're going to discuss a couple of things. First, in case you haven't seen the news, um, Nick Castellanos has signed a contract with the Cincinnati Reds. He signed with the Reds for four years and $64 million. So he is not somebody that the White Sox will have a chance at getting because I know there were many uh, people out there speculating that the White Sox should go after Castellanos now and get him. And um, so that's not something that's possible anymore because he is on the Reds now. So uh, the other thing I wanted to discuss was a few days ago on the uh, 23rd of January, uh, Rick Hahn gave a uh, press conference where he talked about the White Sox and his um, his outlook and what his you know thought process is on uh, you know some of the players and the team going forward and um, just wanted to share a couple of those things with you in case you. Um, haven't seen it, um, like I said, it was like four days ago, so you probably have seen it by now. But anyway, he started the uh, conversation out by saying that the White Sox are essentially done. Uh, he said he never wants to close the door on anything and never say that they're done, done. But for all intents and purposes, they are done, um, at least for the short term. Um, he said maybe there, you know, there may be some minor additions here and there, but basically for right now, the White Sox have the roster that they have and will probably go into spring training 2020 with who they have on the roster. Um, he did say though, that there is still work to be done that they intend to do, um, over the course of the next few months and down the line. Um... So, I mean, that would, that's a good sign. I mean, he doesn't think that this is like the finished product and, you know, we're completely done. So, you know, but uh, I guess the gist of it is you can't expect anything major um, coming out from here going forward for a little while at least. Um, he did say that um, you'll you'll notice in many of my comparison videos I talk about Mandragal uh, eventually being up on the roster and playing second base um, and Mendick starting out the season possibly at second um, but he and he actually kind of reiterated that in fact um, when I talk about Mandrigal being on the roster, I usually talk about him in, in the sense of, you know, they'll, they'll just have him down in the minors to begin the season until his free agency clock isn't running anymore and then bring him up. But it may be even more than that. He may be down there for a little while, maybe a half a season, maybe three quarters of the season. Who knows? So, um, I mean, that's how Rick Hahn made it sound. I don't know if that's really exactly what they're going to do, but that's how it sounded to me. And, um, and in fact, he was asked who was going to play second base for the White Sox in 2020. And he said, right now, my answer to you is some combination of Mendick, Mandrigal, and uh, Lurie Garcia. And then he said, come back and ask me again in March. So, you know, I mean, that pretty much sums it up. I think that makes it sound like Mendick will start the season as the second baseman um, with Lurie Garcia filling in there at times and then um, and then at some point during the season Mandrigal will come up. Um, he also talked about Mazzara, the acquisition of Mazzara from the Rangers. Uh, the way he talked about that was like that um, Mazar is basically a bridge player. He's uh, like a fill-in for right field because they had absolutely nothing out there. Um, and he was affordable. And he was um, not only affordable, but a good value with what he provides for what, he, what his salary is. So, 
Um, he said he's a good placeholder until some of their young guys in the system come along and they can, you know, fill in with with a young right fielder from the system. So, I mean, that's what it sounded, again, that's what it sounded like to me. If any of you guys saw the press conference and you have a different take on it, let me know. But that was my takeaway. But that's still, that's fine. You know, Mazzara this year in right field should do fine. He's a fine ball player. And maybe he even breaks out, who knows? Maybe he goes over and above what he's done so far. So, you never know. Um, and then, uh, finally, one of the big takeaways I got was on Kopech. The, he talked about Kopech, how he has fully recovered from his surgery, but they're going to bring him along slowly, it sounded like to me, um, based on the fact that not only did he not play last year at all, but on top of that, he said even before his injury, he was a work in progress. So there is that. So, I just wanted to let you guys know that, uh, you know, quick White Sox update and a Castellanos going to the Reds update, you know, just to kind of uh, let you know what's going on there in the, uh, in the baseball and the White Sox world. But, you know, nothing really earth-shattering there. If you've seen a lot of my past videos, that a lot of that stuff was the basic stuff that I was saying, you know, that... Mandrigal will be at second at some point during the season. Kopech may be in the bullpen, might be in the rotation, might be in the minors for still a little while longer. So, um, and that the White Sox, you know. I mean, if they're done for right now, that's fine. He did, one of the points that he wanted to make was that the moves that they made were not only for 2020, but with the big picture in mind, going down the road, being good for several years, possibly being able to go to and win a couple of World Series. So, um, but he also did say, and this was encouraging to hear, that if they go into 2020 and they do surprisingly well, better than even the front office was thinking that they would do, for this year that they will go out and bolster the roster as needed to get the pieces that they need because he realized that your chance to win, uh, you only get so many windows where you have a chance to win and when you get them, you need to take them. So that was encouraging to hear as well. So uh, did any of you guys uh, see the press conference? What was your takeaway? Did you kind of... Uh, I uh, think the same thing that I thought um, based on, you know, based on what, what I was am relaying to you, or did you have a different take on, on what he was saying? I'd be very interested to know all that. And remember, subscribe to the channel, ring the bell, share it with other people that you think would be interested. There's my contact information again. I haven't put these cards up for a little while. Uh, there's the Twitter, the Instagram, and there's my email at the bottom. Always willing to talk with uh, other White Sox fans, other sports fans, people, you know, even if you're a fan of another team, uh, but you know a lot about baseball, maybe you follow one of the teams in the AL Central, and so you also uh, know something about the competition, so you know a little about the White Sox willing to hear from anybody and uh and have a nice debate about uh the white Sox 2020 but i think you know we're right on track and i think a lot of the things that rick Hahn said were were things that we kind of uh expected um and you know nothing bad in there so we'll see how it turns out but for right now it's me sportsman z bob zolke signing off